My name is Patriot Patrick Osagi Iholo. I am the president of One Love Foundation. What are people call me Ultimate Equal? Well, it's not something I can articulate in a second. It uh, could have been a couple of things. Um, it was more like organization to reach out to the less privileged in our society. I saw so much injustice. I saw something that I have even suffered as a child. I saw pain. I saw poverty right in my face. And with all these combinations, I felt the only way I can't be happy with my situation is to clearly see other people happy. So I focus more on people, not expecting to get. If I get, I'm grateful. But I focus more in giving because it is more uh, pleasurable, I should say, because the giver never I was actually born in a dose state, a dose state in Benin City to be precise. I was born in uh, a polygamy home. My father and great grandfather were from the royal family. And my father is the uh, chief Iholo of Igwe Sama. Igwe Sama is very known. We do crafts and arts, we carve. I carve even at my age. Uh, and our chief uh, title is uh, hereditary. So it's very synonymous with the palace. And my father have, uh, you know, many children and two wives to be precise. And it's a very large family and uh, we grew up in a street where only the strong survive. It wasn't very easy growing up at Ibiza. I'm sure many people who know the geography of that area can tell you that it's an area that wasn't uh, very easy to raise up a child. If anyone make it to 19, 20 years in that street, it must uh, be uh, a hard knock. In my time, in the area that I grew up, you don't really have something that you focus on in future. Because you don't even know if you are going to grow up. You know, if you were in the West, like my children who are blessed, and you know, I have some of my children in Canada and all that, and it's comfort and there is proper upbringing, there's discipline, there is guarantee that I will go to uh, school and become somebody in life. So in comparison with my children or with my life, it's very different. Come on, I'm using my children as an example. My children know that they will grow up. My children also know that if they grow up, they will aspire to be a doctor or a pilot or a scientist or a priest or what have you. But in my own case, we can't even see the future very brightly because we don't even know if we're going to grow up. <laughs> it's about to, if you grow up, that's to answer your question. But you know, uh, it's only the strong that really survive uh, my time and my era. But there are things that I remember vividly that really push me. That. You know, I, I said, I'm going to hustle or die trying. I'm going to hustle in the right atmosphere or die trying, you know. And one of those things where a friend of mine is late, I may mean, still rest in peace, you know. Ha, <sighs> it's tough, you know. You know, I, I went to their house. And... Greetings, mother. Footballer, until you break your legs. Before I stop going to the field to play football. But I'm tired of home. 
Okay, sit down, let me get you food. Okay, now let me move for you. Okay. Mommy, I'm hungry. You are hungry? <laughs> Come and eat me. So you brought your red eye friend to this house to come and eat my food. We are hungry. Give us food. Over my dead body. Will he eat out of my food? Mother, where? Let him go to his parents for food. He said they don't have food in their home. How is that supposed to be my business? I will not serve you food until he leaves. Mother, this is not right. If you want to eat, tell him to leave. After which, I will serve you food. I was tortured, I was pain. I'm going back home. My parents were at home and there was nothing to eat. So it was very tough for me as a child. I couldn't understand why I had to starve. You know? And then thereafter, you know, in my own time, people judge you for your look. Because when you are hungry, your eyes are red like blood. You know? And people judge you with your physical appearance. And I, you know, as I come to understand life, I tell people that it is not the physical appearance of a man that matters, but what qualifies the human character. I have a character that was very nice, but people do, don't really understand that. And that's why today, I live my life not for people. And that's why you see today, it was strange for people having tattoos in my days. I have it all. My dad questioned me before it was late. My mom questioned me. I told my mom, this is what I like to do, and this is me. I like the art in my body, it was an expression. So, yes, uh, that's part of uh, the, the, the journey. And you here today, I've told you in my intro that people call me ultimate ego. And this is going to be very quite interesting. I think I should mention it to you why that name came to play. Because a lot of people don't know why they call me the ultimate. So when I, my time, I was always judged because, you know, we came up, came, came up growing up, with, from you know humble background, but you know as it is what it is is this. My father didn't really have it all that like my mom. They were traders, you know. They also hustle in their own way. But I was always judged whether if I was going to the clubhouse, whether I was going to play soccer, whether if I was going to be part of the race in my school, because it was tough to go to school. There was no money. Everything I have today is self-educated. I never had the privilege. Papa, 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 what? What? Uh, I need to go to school. School? Yes, Papa. Which do you prefer? Going to school or buying a Christmas dress? Nonsense. Very, very interesting. When I finally break my chain and travel from this shore to Canada, because I've been reading, because I was very eager and desperate to read all books, any books, any kind, Bible, magazine, or whatever. I read everything. Because I was eager to learn. I was desperate to learn. You know what I mean? So, and I have, a, I have a hero that I never know. It was Luther King Jr. Because I read about him. So at first, when I was fortunate enough to get my papers in Canada, I traveled to Atlanta, Georgia to pay, you know, that homage to my, to my hero. I went to his library. When I got to his library, I was reading, and my eye captured something very large in that. So I find that something interesting. Ultimate. And Luther King Jr., redefine ultimate to me. Because for me, as a person, I thought the ultimate was the ultimate of Buddha, as in Buddha drinking in Nigeria. But he redefined it that the ultimate measure of a man is not his time of comfort and convenience, but rather 
the ultimate measure of a man is a time of challenge and controversy. That when you beat your time and controversies in life, you become the ultimate. I say, wow, that's me. I am the ultimate. This is me that was denied some piece of fish, some meat to eat, and I'm right here <laughs> in the land of the promise, America, Atlanta, Georgia. God damn it. I said, where? I found a name for myself. I am the ultimate. God was fortunate to come to Nigeria. I had that in my mind, I'm the ultimate. But it's not over yet. When my father was growing up, my father was a, a port. He had a modern school certificate. But he, he, he has a constant writing. He was a poet. He read, he write. But he was also uh, deprived from, from attending his goal in life because the father was also very poor. And that's why I tell people, if you are poor, it's not your fault. But if you remain poor because you're fault, you have to challenge it. Because poverty is not friendly. <laughs> you feel me, right? So, my father used to have a friend. Barman! Barman! Ah! Come now! Okay, sir. Ah. That land issue we discussed about. Oh, we, yeah, we are trying. We are trying. See, what, is, what did happen now? Serve, serve all of us. Okay, sir. Oga, okay, this for me eh. is sweet, dry. Eh. If you test her, your head will correct. And yeah, we carry weight. That's when you talk. Correct it now. This go for me. Yes, we can hear this. From village, oh. Mm. I know. Let me just tap up by myself, sir. True? Yes, sir. They climb? Ah, they climb. Zaba, Zaba, Zaba. Hmm. Good, 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 good. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, thank you, my friend. Ah, uh, what are friends for? Ah, for bad times and for good times. You are right, <laughs> very right. Uh, See, by tomorrow, eh, I am going to buy a new white super bicycle. Mm. <laughs> I need to join the elite club. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> thank you very much, my friend. Yes. Thank you. When, when are you going to buy your own white super? You need to upgrade your status, you know. Um, that's true. That's true. Uh, as soon as things get better, I'll buy my own. Mm. Yes. Please, do it quickly. Eh? Yes, of course, yes, I will do it. Drink up, <laughs> drink up, drink up, drink up. What do that business we're discussing about now? Don't drink, just drink. Don't worry, we'll do it. Don't worry. <laughs> I came as planned, so that we can go to the community meeting. Meeting? Oh, that? Oh, okay. Are you not going? I am going, but not with you. Why? Ah. See, I am no more in your class. I am no more in your class, so I, I move people that are in my class, not you. Why do you say so? It's not obvious. I have a white super bicycle. I now move with people that have white super bicycle, like me, the elite class. You don't have one. Ah. Yesterday we drank together. Oh, that was yesterday. Yes, we drank one together. Well, that was yesterday. Today is another day. I am no more in your class. Can you, don't you get it? Oyigwe. See, my friend, let me advise you. Go and work very hard eh, so that you can buy a white super bicycle like my own. So that, see, if you don't buy a white super bicycle, don't even go to my house again. No. Get out. <sighs> Get out now. Okay? It's okay. Uh, I'm not your mate anymore. It's okay. Look at the white, white superb. White okay. superb bicycle. Uh, you want to. Uh, oh. Can you hear that? Uh.
what is the matter? I only came to check if you are done eating so I can clear the dishes. Hope all is well, my husband. I have never been so humiliated in my life. Who humiliated you? It is okay. <laughs> uh, my bosom friend. <laughs> 